what is happening here? everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Welcome back to Team Recorder. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon. That means you get a notification whenever I post. So a while back I did a video on how I dealt with pregnancy, specifically as a freelance performing musician. And in the meantime, my daughter Bodil is one year old already. Where did the time go? And here she is. Say hello Bodil. So I thought I would do a follow up on being a working parent to a baby as a freelance musician. When I embarked upon this journey, there were so many unanswered questions. How would we cope with this? I wish there had been a video a bit like this that I could have turned to. So maybe by sharing my experience, it might help someone else, help someone else. And I'm gonna start off with a few caveats. Obviously, this is my experience. It won't be valid for everybody. If you feel differently, then that's of course completely fine. We live in the Netherlands, which has, in my opinion, a very good support system in terms of pre and postnatal care, good maternity pay, childcare subsidy from birth. So that makes a lot of things possible. And Bodil and I were both really lucky to not have any health complications on the whole, apart from some very normal things. We were both healthy and that makes a huge difference. And John is also an absolutely fantastic dad. He is brilliant with Bodil. We parent really equally. Now for the difficult things, both my husband John and I are performing touring musicians, uh, which is quite an irregular lifestyle. And we don't have any family in the country at all. I'm from England, John is from America, we live in the Netherlands. Our parents live across three different continents. So that was kind of difficult. So that's kind of our starting point. So my approach to working as a first time mum was, don't know how it's gonna be, let's just try it and find out. Let's see what works. If it doesn't work, try something else. And that's basically my approach to parenting. Do whatever works with a lot of optimism and love and a healthy dose of, ah. Going back to work as a freelancer, you decide this for yourself. There's no set date. And I do lots of different things. And I actually built up going back to work very gradually. Let's see. Um, I played my first concert when Bodil was 11 weeks old. That felt really good, but I was also like, where am I? Uh, then when she was three months old, we flew to the UK and I gave two days of masterclasses in Scotland, then drove down to Manchester and had a day filming with the BBC. This was great, but it was a lot. When she was four months old, I was teaching at a recorder festival in Belgium for three days. That was pretty heavy because I had to take her with me. And then I went back to everything full time when she was around five and a half months old. And when I say I went back to everything, that's concerts, rehearsals, teaching two days a week, working in a concert hall and YouTube. That's also actually really part of my job now. Every single one of these steps felt good in terms of I really enjoy what I'm doing, but it was also tough and each time I started something new, it felt quite early to be doing that. In the first week I was fully back at work, I had eight concerts. I mean, that would be a really heavy week before I had been a parent, so this was, ugh. Before I had the baby, I didn't know how it would be, so I hadn't actually changed my work schedule at all. I was just going fully back into everything that I'd been doing before I had a baby. And it was very quickly apparent that this was way too much. Many of us musicians are also complete workaholics. I was used to working seven days a week, all hours of the day, and this does not combine with a baby unsurprisingly. Also around this point, six months, Bodil had a massive sleep regression. Unsurprisingly, around the time I went back to work, her sleep got worse. Oh. <laughs> Something had to give. After a couple of months, I made the decision to quit my music school job. That was two days of teaching. It was really hard to say goodbye to my students, but it was just too much. And this also meant that now absolutely everything I do is freelance, which is quite scary, but it does mean I can completely organize my time. If there's a week where John is away on tour, I can be with Bodil or we can go together. I can plan busy weeks, free weeks. For me, for now, it's better to do it this way. 
it felt like I could either choose completely for the nine to five office hours or the complete freelance and I went that way and it's working so far. So making the change to taking on less work was the first step. The second step was actually accepting this. I've basically been working at 100% on being a musician for my entire adult life. This is my whole personality and I realised it was my whole self-worth and to leave part of that behind was really scary. I just had to give myself the time to get used to it and gradually I could adjust and kind of realise that I then had the time and energy to spend with Bodil and also making sure that the work I was doing I could really do properly. I wasn't having to rush and spread myself too thin. I mean we're just really lucky that me and John have enough work to make this possible. Um, I still work a lot, don't get me wrong. <laughs> But I think I work like a normal person rather than like a workaholic musician. So I'd say it's taken until now, like a year down the line, to have found a balance with what I'm doing that I'm happy with. So this brings me to one of the big questions, childcare. How on earth were we going to juggle our crazy irregular lifestyles with a little baby who needs us? As I said, we don't have any family here to help us. We have a really good relationship with our parents and of course they've come to visit and when they're there that helps a lot, but it's not like they can come one or two days a week. So this was a big point of stress before she was born, basically. Oh my God. For the first six months, we took Bodil with us everywhere. Um, from when she was two months old, John was fully touring, performing all over Europe and we would just all go. <laughs> I can't tell you how many theatre and concert hall backstages Bodil has been in. We bought her these special baby headphones, so she's laying there sleeping even during concerts and rehearsals. We can't always plan it that all three of us can go together, often we have to have concerts at the same time. Twice I've managed to take a friend with me who has looked after Bodil when I've been working. We did this in Belgium when she was four months old, but also in December I went to Singapore for a week and took Bodil took a friend who was our babysitter and it worked. And of course it was exhausting, but it worked and Bodil had a great time. This is her hanging out backstage. When I've been performing in the Netherlands, I've also hired a babysitter to literally just be with Bodil backstage while I perform. Um, in the early months, this really worked. She was just kind of with us all the time. We didn't really have a routine. We just took her with us wherever we went. She was sleeping and feeding around the clock. As she got older, we really started to notice that babies need routine. She needed a bedtime, she needed to nap, and just having her with us backstage until midnight was not working anymore. When Bodil was around six months old, we started with daycare and we have been so lucky to find a really great daycare that is completely flexible. So Bodil can also go there um, at weekends or in the evenings. Every week is different. We can just book the times in and this has been a complete lifesaver. It amazes me that there is not more daycare available like this because nowadays so many people are self-employed, freelancers, work night shifts, work on and off. Um, and I find it really strange that most daycare is Monday to Friday, nine till five. Anyway. <laughs> And the question of traveling with a baby, now that's a whole video on its own, but we actually found it's completely possible. The younger they are, the easier it is. The older she gets, the tougher it's gonna get. She has a lot of energy, but you always get through it. Just be relaxed and flexible and take a lot of entertainment with you. And so that was my work outside the house, traveling, touring, performing. What about all the stuff I had to get done at home? As a freelancer, there is a huge amount of behind the scenes work. All the preparation, practice, administration, emails. I discovered when you have a baby, the hours you have in the day to work on your own stuff are drastically reduced. As Bodil gets older, she needs 100% of my attention when I'm with her. There's been times when John has gone away on tour for a week or more and then I just can't do anything. So in the evenings I was putting her to bed then doing a couple of hours of work then. But it wasn't easy squeezing everything into that short amount of time. So basically I was always running to catch up with my work. I wasn't sleeping enough, obviously, and I was just exhausted. 
Two things really helped with this. One thing has been booking a fixed day per week with, with our daycare that I can use as my office day. That's today, as you can see. So in my office day, I'll get as much admin done as I can, film a couple of YouTube videos, do practice, just kind of squeeze it all in. And the other thing that took 11 months for me to figure out, but finally has worked is nap time. <laughs> Now, finally, she goes down for a proper nap in her own bed. She sleeps for two hours and I just have this like huge window of time that I can do anything with. Please don't ask me why it took me 11 months to figure out how to get my baby to nap in her bed. This parenting thing is not easy, but we got there. So in the beginning when she was tiny, we were completely flexible. She followed us everywhere. But in the meantime, I've seen a good solid routine for your baby works. One thing that I never thought about before I had a baby, but suddenly becomes a huge focus, if you are a mum who is breastfeeding, that is pumping milk. If you're not breastfeeding, if you're doing bottle feeding, absolutely fine, you do what works. Uh, for me I was breastfeeding. However, when I wasn't with her, that would mean I had to pump milk both to take home from her and to kind of relieve it or building up. It sounds like a small thing, but when you go back to work, you have to spend quite a lot of time pumping. This basically meant that whenever I had a break, I was running and pumping, and then you actually don't get any time off at all. Um, so it's not the biggest thing in the world, but I thought I'd mention it because I wasn't prepared for it. I still nurse by deal now, especially at bedtime, but I don't have to pump when I'm working anymore and it's such a relief. <sighs> oh, and a very nice side effect. After spending nine months getting increasingly more pregnant, my air capacity is amazing, if I do say so myself. I recently had a concert tour and I felt like, oh my God, my breathing. <sighs> uh, in my video about Pregnancy, I talked about a couple of the mental things you might face, and I think that's important to do here as well so that they're not taboo. I did feel going into parenting that you're expected to be on this happy cloud all the time in the newborn glow, and it does not feel like that. So it's really important to talk about these things. Personally, I found the hardest thing about being a new parent is the self-doubt. Like I said, I had gone from being a professional musician, something I felt very qualified to do. I had lots of experience, I knew what I was doing, and I did that all the time. And not only did I stop doing that for a time, so I felt like what had been my reason for being was suddenly on hold. You're also suddenly completely responsible for this human being. I felt completely unqualified, no experience, and just like, oh my God, this responsibility is huge. Added to this, I also found that other mothers tend to have very strong opinions. And for every one person saying you're doing it correctly, there's someone telling you that you're probably irrevocably damaging your child. Ugh. I don't know. The way to go forward, I found, was just keep going talk to people, join some Facebook groups, and gradually you get more and more confident. Yeah, and as you tackle each new situation, you figure out what to do, your confidence will build up. Now I pretty much feel like I know what I'm doing. Bodil is not yet a toddler. I think in a few months when she is having tantrums and saying no and running around, uh, I'm gonna feel completely different, but for now it's okay. I think it's very important to say as well, my experiences have been on the kind of normal scale of things. If you feel like you or your partner could be suffering from postnatal depression, please see a medical professional. But yeah, it's important to say that. Which brings me to the other thing that really surprised me about parenting, which I wasn't expecting. And that is that being a new parent can be really lonely. There were times this year when I felt like literally all I was doing was feeding a baby and looking at other people living their best lives on Instagram. Suddenly you can't spontaneously go out whenever you want anymore. You're tired all the time. It can feel like a lot of your friends are living in a different time zone. You also don't want to bore your friends with endless stories about baby poop. Uh, 
how to deal with this. I found that reaching out to friends and being really honest with them um, can really help. So with my friends that don't have babies and you can feel like you've drifted apart a little bit, saying something like, I really miss you. Please can we meet up and have an adult conversation where we don't talk about babies and just feel a bit normal. I've also gone to quite a few baby groups to meet other mums and you won't click with everybody, but when you find someone you do click with, it's great when they say something like, should we go for coffee? Should, should, we, should we just like be friends? Let's be friends. Finding other people who are in the same boat as you is really, really helpful. So I feel like I've talked a lot and I probably missed a lot of stuff out. Let's try and draw a couple of conclusions. Uh, for a start, I, I love being a parent. I love Bodil. She's just the most wonderful, funny, hilarious, wise little creature. Um, I could spend all day with her. Well, I do. John is also a fantastic dad. He is really hands-on. I feel like this year, um, having the time and the energy to do less than I would before has really shown me amongst all the different freelance things I do, which ones are the ones I want to spend my time and energy on. Of course, I still have to make it work financially, I have to pay my bills, but now I'm very careful about the work that I do take on. And we found that you can still do all of the stuff you were doing before you had a baby. It's just a lot more complicated. So it's about choosing what is still realistic for you, what you still want to be doing, what you still need to be doing, but you can make it work. So, I hope that these garbled ramblings made some kind of sense. Maybe I'll look back on this video in a year and be like, sweet summer child. If you are a working parent, I'd love it if you shared some of your experiences in the comments or we could have a chat. I'm always happy to hear tips and experiences from people. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. Down here, you can support the channel through the Team Recorder Patreon. Oh dear. Can you put your arms up? Yeah! What? what? Oh no! Oh no! Okay, that's enough, thank you!